In today's video, I'll be attempting to make a DIY air conditioner that really works. Then I'll be attempting to salvage some old t-shirts and turn them into new graphic t-shirts, which kind of works, but almost kills me. Plus more things you guys dared me to do in the comment section. In the last video, I asked you guys to tell me what you are most proud of. And your answers were hilarious and weird, which is exactly what I've come to expect from you guys. And I wouldn't want it any other way. But since you guys left so many comments, I thought I'd ask another question. What is something you personally do to save money? It can be something like reusing your coffee stirrer or making your own clothes, like what I'm gonna be attempting to do in this video, or even how you downgraded from a castle to a mansion. Put whatever you can come up with in the comment section and I'll feature 10 of my favorite comments in the next video. That and keep leaving your dares. All right, let's get this thing going. For this life hack, we're gonna be finding out how well a DIY air conditioner really works and putting together a design that I think will blow away the competition. For this next part in today's video, I'm gonna be making a DIY DIY air conditioner that you can make yourself for just a few dollars and it really works well hopefully I haven't made it yet but it should work a while back there was a DIY air conditioner video that went viral the first thing was that the fan blew in from the top so the air didn't actually get sucked through the ice it just sort of skimmed on top of it and also because the fan was not next to the ground it wasn't getting the coldest air in the house to start with and furthermore because of the vent placement which was way down low where the top of the cooler was I think that would be an inefficient way to try to cool the entire room now don't get me wrong I thought that first design was pretty awesome I just think we can do better I'm gonna be using two styrofoam coolers that look like this, this random fan that I had laying around, five feet of dryer duct, and that's just about it. I'll also be hanging the dryer duct onto the wall using a string and a hook. I might use a hot glue gun to fasten the hose to the styrofoam. Probably have to throw some duct tape in here and there, but other than that, that should be everything. Oh, and ice. We're gonna need some ice, but nothing more than that, I don't think. But let's get this thing going. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take apart this fan. All right, now we're just gonna trace the fan out onto the cooler. Meh, good enough. Okay, so far so good. That's actually really good placement. Now I'm gonna hot glue it on there. Hopefully that will hold it. Holds it on there well. Okay, good, on to the next step. And now I'm gonna be taking the lid and drilling a bunch of holes in it. This next part is going to be simply fitting the hose with the bottom part of one of the coolers. Okay, so the device is complete. I think that what we have here is an air conditioner now, and I just wanted to show you a little bit of the anatomy on how it works. So the bottom section is just a cooler with a giant hole cut out and a fan hot glued to it. And this is just basically an air intake. And this is a lid that I drilled a bunch of holes in that I'm now going to place upside down on top of the first compartment. This is where I'm gonna be putting all the ice. You can use whatever you want as long as it's cold. And here's the top of it that will also have the vent connected, which you can point whichever direction you want. And of course this stretch out to five feet so I can put it up pretty high on the wall so that way I can be sure that the rest of the room gets cooled too. And to hang the vent on the wall I'm just going to be using a tiny piece of string. I think it looks pretty good so far. I mean given that it's an at-home DIY air conditioner. Now I'm going to load it up full of ice and see how well it works. Now this is the middle piece of styrofoam that I poked all the holes in, and that's what I'm gonna be setting my ice bottles on. Okay, looks like it's full. And I'm gonna use these little strappy things that it comes with to make sure that it all stays together after I turn it on. Now I could put weights on it or even tape it together to make sure that it doesn't come apart after I turn it on, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be okay. All right, now I guess all that's left to do is turn it on and see what happens. And I'm just gonna put it on full blast right away, just so that way we can see how much wind this thing's actually putting out. That feels like it's blowing pretty good. I'm trying to figure out ways I can demonstrate to you guys like how hard that's blowing. I mean, it's putting out a lot of air. I would definitely say that this is comparable to just a normal vent for an air conditioner system. I mean, it's just a small piece of plastic, but still, it's enough to get this thing moving. Hold on, let me try another test. From this far away, it's pushing the flame that hard. Look, even from back here. 
You can't even keep it lit if it's close enough to it. So I'd say that's a pretty good wind stream. Okay, now I have a thermometer. I'm gonna try to test out the system. Turn it on. Okay, right now it's saying it's 75 degrees in here. 75.1, 75. That seems about right. Now I'm gonna stick it in the air conditioner, turn it on, and then we'll see what it says in a minute. Fifty-eight point five. That's not bad. I mean, if it's a hot summer day, that's gonna really make the difference. Now, you might want to make a few of these if you're planning on cooling off your entire house. But some things I could do to make it even colder than that that I didn't even bother with was turning my freezer all the way up so that way the ice that I'm putting in there is even colder. Also, putting it in the coldest room in the house would have made sense. This is kind of a warm wall it leads to the outside. Also, I could have sealed up the joints a little bit better and gotten more airflow and made it colder, but this was fine and it took almost zero effort. And that being said, I might actually use this from time to time because it works so well and it just runs on ice. That is if Kristen will allow me to have this monstrosity in the corner. And that being said, we'll be on to the next life hack. Now we'll be finding out if it's possible to salvage your old t-shirts by dyeing them and printing out new designs on them. For this next life hack, what we're gonna be doing is taking a bunch of my old shirts, dyeing them, and then putting designs on them as if they were brand new. And hopefully they'll look like that, but this is my very first time doing this. And I'm gonna be using some Something called RIT Clothes Dye. I've seen a few tutorials of how to use this online, and I think I might have an idea of what I'm supposed to be doing here, although I'm very ill-prepared. There's actually a fabric dye setter that I could not find anywhere in the stores. I searched all over for it, and it says to use it on the back of this, but most of the people that use this don't actually use that anyways. That being said, if this life hack works, it's going to save me a ton of money. I mean, four shirts at 25 bucks a piece for brand name shirts, that's 100 bucks. And we were able to get a bottle of dye for $3. And I'm gonna be printing out different designs using transfer paper and applying it to each of the shirts after we're done. It should look pretty cool, or I'll have to throw out these shirts. But I think I was on the verge of probably having to do that anyways, so might as well give it a shot. Now, before you do this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to definitely have cleaned clothes. Even though they're stained or whatever's wrong with them, make sure that they're at least cleaned. It'll help the dye soak in. Fill up your sink about halfway using hot water, and I'm also boiling water, and I'm gonna throw that in it as well to get the temperature as high as possible because that is supposed to help. While this is filling up, I can put in one cup of salt. That's also gonna help all the fabric dye stay on the clothes. Now, before we get into anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and put these gloves on. If this dye touches your skin, it's gonna stain your skin. Now I basically just have to stir this for the next 30 minutes or so, and then it'll be done. Well, almost. I forgot one thing, I'm supposed to add dish soap. Okay, that's already enough dish soap. It's been in there for quite some time now, and my clothes are looking pretty black for the most part, but not exactly where I want them to be yet. I'm just gonna leave these in here for a really long time and hope that they turn out black eventually. All right, now it has been more than 30 minutes and I think it's time to drain the sink and rinse off what I've got. This one doesn't look very black. Okay, so now I'm gonna rinse off each one of these and then when I'm done, I'm gonna put them in the washing machine with no detergent, dry them out, and then we'll put our designs on. The next step is to just wash your clothes without detergent. And I'm sure you guys don't need to relearn how to wash your clothes. Well, most of you. And if you're not planning on adding a design to your shirt, then you're done. If you are planning on putting a design on your shirt, then you're probably gonna wanna use transfer paper, which is available at any office supply store or Walmart, wherever. Then you can find whatever images you wanna put on your shirt by searching Google or using an image you created yourself. I would suggest anything that's high resolution. And it has to be flipped. In other words, it has to be an exact reverse image of what you want the shirt to look like. But you can do a few tests on normal paper to make sure that it's perfect because transfer paper is about a dollar per sheet. But if you don't know how to flip an image, I'll show you an easy way to do that now. Go to a website like this one that I found, flipapicture.com. You just add the image, say that you want to flip it, and click where it says click here. It's that simple. Then you right click, save image as, then you print your backwards image onto the transfer paper. Yes, it's a perfect Blockbuster logo. Perfect. After your shirts are finished washing and drying, you finally get to see if your hard work has paid off. And for me, dyeing the shirts took a couple tries. So I washed my shirts and dried them and then took a look and they were not quite there yet. So I ended up completely redoing that process using three bottles of RIT in much less water that was way hotter. And they're still not completely black. But they do look more even and, and they look pretty fresh. So now I've got them in the dryer and waiting for them to be done for a full inspection. But the next thing I need to do is cut out the designs that I printed. I also messed that part up too. I was able to cut out the design, but you have to make sure that you print out your image on the right side of the paper. So. That was fun. So here are my shirts. 
This one came out splotchy. For some reason, it's still not dry yet. I have no idea why. The rest of these are dry, but they're kind of subpar for the most part. I actually think that these two are the best ones out of the four. And these aren't unwearable, they're just a little bit splotchy, and they don't look perfect. These actually look a little bit better as far as the consistency and the color. But after all was said and done, I actually spent about $12 on dye just to fix my old shirts, when for 12 bucks I could have gotten four brand new shirts. So depending on what you're trying to go for, maybe the best life hack is just knowing a better deal when you see it. If it's something you don't think you can replace for $3, then it makes a lot more sense to try and dye it. But but since we've come this far, am I supposed to peel this off first or something? Okay, well, I royally messed that up. I printed the image out on the wrong side of the paper. It's my first time doing this. So I just repeated the same steps with the paper the other way, and here we are. Okay, let's give this a shot. I don't know, I think that's about right. I'm just gonna wait for it to cool off and peel it and we'll see what we get. Okay, now all that's left is to peel this thing off and see what we've got. All right, I'd say that's pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect, but this is an at-home DIY Harry Potter shirt. I did not plan for it to come out all grainy like that. It just sort of did. But either way, I am totally happy with these results. That's awesome. I was gonna throw this shirt away and instead I turned it into a fake piece of Harry Potter merchandise. But I'm going to enjoy this. You'll probably see me wearing it in videos soon. So if you found this video helpful or if you just enjoyed it, make sure to leave it a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, bell me for notifications. And of course, I'll be seeing you guys in just a few days with a new video. All right, thanks guys, bye.